There's enough data around now to show that a home solar installation can pay for itself in just a few years, especially now that prices are coming down all the time. Even better, in many parts of the world you can get paid well for any energy you export, which brings down the solar payback period even more. But what about the return on investment for a home battery? Is that as clear cut as solar? Mm, actually, not at all. Let's dig in and find out. Hi, I'm Gary and welcome back to my channel Gary Does Solar. Batteries are still a relatively expensive part of any solar and battery installation, especially if you're looking to get one large enough to cover your daily usage with cheaper energy in the winter months. Check out my video here on why I believe having a home battery is a great add-on to any solar system. But given the sizeable cost of a home battery, how do you know that you'll get a decent return on investment or ROI with it? Specifically, how do you isolate the return on investment that a battery alone is providing as opposed to the ROI you're getting from the complete solar and battery installation? That's what we'll be looking at in this video, so you can hopefully get a better idea on how much value your battery is providing against what you paid for it. But I have to warn you, there's no simple spreadsheet where you can throw in a few numbers and get a how many years until payback answer. I wish there was. Instead, you'll find the payback for your battery depends as much upon how you use it as the price you paid for it. In this video then, I'll be taking you on a short but hopefully illuminating journey that heads towards the answer. So where to begin then? What are the main factors we should be considering when working out battery ROI? Well, we should probably start with the cost of the battery, and that is a typically fairly hefty upfront cost for the capacity and the specification you require. Then we think about the expected lifetime of the battery. Battery lifetime is typically measured in a number of charge cycles the battery is expected to complete during its working life. A single charge cycle is measured as a battery going from its fully discharged state to a fully charged state and then back to a fully discharged state. It's good to know though that a charge cycle doesn't have to happen all at once. For example, if a battery is charged from 0 to 50% and then discharged back to 0 before being charged once more from 0 to 50% then discharged back to 0% again, this is all counted as a single cycle. Today's lithium batteries are typically able to operate for 6,000 cycles during their working life. And if we assume that for a typical home installation, the battery will experience, say, one cycle per day, it could theoretically last 16 years. However, if the battery is cycled 1.5 or two times a day, for example, working with a smart tariff which has two off-peak periods, then the lifetime of that battery will significantly reduce, perhaps down to eight or 10 years. If you already have a battery, you can look at the data to see how many cycles it typically does in a day. Here's a chart for my own battery, and as you can see, it's roughly a single cycle each day. This brings us neatly on to warranties then. Battery manufacturers will typically offer a warranty in terms of a number of guaranteed years of operation, for example, 10 years, but they may also place an upper limit on the number of battery cycles, for example, 6,000 cycles. Provided that the battery operation is kept within these warranty limits, should it fail, it will be replaced by the manufacturer or a payment made to cover loss of operation, which can be used towards the cost of a new battery. What's great these days, though, is that more and more battery warranties are now being drawn up citing unlimited cycles. That means if you want to hammer the battery during your warranty period, you can. And if instead you wanted to treat the battery with kid gloves, you can make the battery last a lot longer than its warranty period. There's one more aspect of battery performance that we should consider at this time, and that's degradation. During the first year of operation, you can expect your battery to perform at its advertised capacity. It would be nice to think it would continue throughout the entire warranty period, but we know the capacity will drop over time. Many battery warranties will also specify the minimum operational capacity to be expected at the end of the warranty period. For example, here it might be 70% of the original capacity. And so we can expect the capacity to gradually decrease over the lifetime of the battery, like this. Where we want to get to then, knowing the initial cost of the battery and its expected lifetime, is to work out how much it costs to use the battery, almost as if it were a service that we were paying for rather than a product we were buying up front. In other words, the battery's amortized cost. And more specifically, we want to calculate the cost of using the battery as a cost per kilowatt hour, as this will allow us to see exactly what the costs are when planning various battery actions, like forced discharging, etc. And even more specifically, we want to calculate a cost per kilowatt hour discharged. 
because it's only when we get the energy out of the battery that it's useful to us. And by concentrating on discharged energy, we intrinsically take into account the charging and discharging losses, which could be as much as 10% for some batteries. Okay, let's take a formula that takes into account everything we've talked about to come up with a cost per kilowatt hour number for our battery. In order for the formula to work, we need to decide how long we'll be using the battery for. We could, for example, keep the battery only as long as the warranty period, and then replace it with a new battery under warranty after that. Let's call that the under warranty formula. Or we might continue using the battery for as long as it will last, and that could be a good few years after the warranty has expired. We'll call that the run it into the ground formula. Let's start with the under warranty formula as it's the easier of the two. The formula is quite straightforward really. We first work out the average capacity across the warranty lifetime by adding the starting capacity and the ending capacity together and dividing by two. For example, a 10 kilowatt hour battery that is expected to still have seven kilowatt hours after 10 years, the average capacity is 8.5 kilowatt hours each year. And using this, we can then work out the total number of kilowatt hours throughout the entire warranty period. The total kilowatt hours is equal to the average capacity multiplied by the expected number of cycles per day, multiplied by the number of days in a year, and finally multiplied by the warranty period in years. And now we can work out the cost per kilowatt hour, which is simply the total kilowatt hours divided into the upfront cost of the battery. This formula should be good enough for helping calculate battery ROI, but should there be any corrections based on viewer feedback or any updates, I'll of course include that in the video description. Okay, let's run some examples then showing the under warranty formula in action. I've taken a 10 kilowatt hour battery costing around 4,000 pounds and having a warranty which guarantees a capacity of at least seven kilowatt hours after a 10 years operation. If we work on the basis of one cycle per day, the cost per kilowatt hour works out at 12 pence. And you can see that if we run more than one cycle per day, here we have 1.5 and two cycles per day, the cost per kilowatt hour comes down to nine and then six pence. We'll talk about what this means in terms of battery ROI in a moment, but first let's look at the changes with the run it into the ground formula. Here's the diagram we looked at earlier showing the degradation in battery capacity over the warranty period, in this case 10 years. Provided we haven't breached the cycle limit of the battery, we can theoretically continue using it for a few more years. In this example, assuming one cycle per day, it could mean another six years. And if we compare the size of the light blue area with the dark blue, it represents potentially another 40% of useful operation beyond the warranty period. I won't detail the actual run it into the ground formula here, but my intention is to add the ROI capability into my Solar Asthma Pro utility, allowing automated cost per kilowatt hour calculations for both the under warranty and the run it into the ground scenarios. And I'll talk later about how you can get your hands on this utility. By the way, if you're getting a lot from my videos and you live in the UK, I just love Octopus Energy and I've no hesitation recommending them to you. They're just way ahead of the competition and have always provided excellent customer service and they have a whole range of innovative tariffs that will allow you to get the best from your solar and battery installation. And even better, if you switch to them using my referral code, you'll get £50 credited to your account. I'll also get £50, which helps keep my channel running. Thank you. Okay, so now that we have a cost per kilowatt hour, what does it mean for us? We'll use the 12 pence as an example, but of course you'll soon be able to use Solar Asthma Pro to calculate the cost per kilowatt hour for your own battery. Let's look at the impact of the cost per kilowatt hour value on an example smart tariff provided by Octopus Energy in the UK. The tariff is called Intelligent Octopus and it's designed for EV users. As you can see that whilst the standard import rate is just under 30 pence per kilowatt hour, it has an attractive off-peak import rate of only seven and a half pence. As well as charging your EV, this rate can also be used to charge your battery. And there's also an export rate, which was 4.5 pence per kilowatt hour exported. But as of last week, this was raised to a very attractive 15 pence. Now the astute of you will immediately notice that you could charge your battery during the off-peak period at seven and a half pence, and then export all of that by forced discharging the battery immediately after, making a profit of seven and a half pence per kilowatt hour, or 75 pence in total for a 10 kilowatt hour battery. Do that every day for a year, and that's an easy profit of 273 pounds. But this get rich quick scheme is not as good as it first appears, I'm afraid. 
because you need to take into account the cost per kilowatt hour for the battery. Let's add that in now. Oh dear, when we subtract the 12 pence cost per kilowatt hour, the 7.5 pence profit turns into a 4.5 pence loss, which is a 45 pence loss for the day for the 10 kilowatt hour battery capacity. And if we'd carried on with that strategy for a whole year not knowing any better, instead of a £273 profit, we would eventually end up with a £164 loss. And actually the losses are slightly worse than that because it takes 11 kilowatt hours of energy to fill a 10 kilowatt hour battery. Okay, we're getting closer to being able to work out the battery ROI. Next up, we need to look at all the potentially profitable actions with a solar and battery system. There are three actions that don't require the use of a battery. The first is using your solar generation to directly supply your home appliances. This is probably the most profitable action, as the generation is only subject to the cost of the solar installation itself. And certainly in many parts of the Northern Hemisphere, when the sun is shining, the cost of energy would typically be at a standard or even peak rate. The second action is not quite as profitable, but could be lucrative depending on the smart tariff you're on. Again, the solar generation is only subject to the cost of the installation, and the export rate could be very high. To complete the non-use of battery picture, the third action is to buy energy during off-peak times and use it immediately, for example charging your EV or running a heavy appliance such as a washing machine early in the morning. Then there are four additional actions, this time involving the use of a battery. The first is using your solar generation to charge a battery and then later discharge that energy to supply your home appliances. This is probably the most profitable of the battery actions. Again, as the generation is only subject to the cost of the solar installation itself, and even when the cost per kilowatt hour is taken into account, should still allow a good saving against the cost of energy to supply those home appliances otherwise. The second most likely profitable battery action is buying cheap off-peak energy from the grid, then storing it for later use by home appliances. This is profitable provided the cost of energy at the time when it is used by those home appliances is greater than the off-peak energy cost plus the cost per kilowatt hour, taking into account any conversion losses. And using this cheap stored energy to power home appliances during a peak import period would likely yield the highest profit. The third battery action is storing your solar generation in the battery and then exporting it all to the grid later on. As before, the solar generation is free, bar the installation costs, and so a profit could be made if the export rate is higher than the cost per kilowatt hour, taking into account conversion losses. And finally, the fourth battery action is that get-rich-quick scheme we looked at moments ago. It appears to be profitable, but only when the export rate is high enough. If we rearrange these actions, you can see that we always have a choice of which action to take in any given circumstance. On the left, with our solar generation, we can choose to consume it now, or store and consume it later, or store and send it to the grid later, or send it to the grid now. And on the right, with the grid import energy, we can choose to consume that now, or store it and consume it later, or store it and send it back to the grid later. And the choices we make will depend on a number of factors. For example, characteristics about our battery, including capacity and our calculated cost per kilowatt hour, of course, but also things like maximum charging and discharging rates, the energy tariff you're using, and that tariff may change during the lifetime of the battery, and in some cases during the course of a year, and even the time of day, depending on the attributes of the smart tariff you're on. I just don't think it's possible to get an accurate ROI calculation for a battery with a simple spreadsheet especially as energy tariffs are becoming more and more exotic over time. So my plan is to take a more comprehensive approach and build the ROI calculation inside my Solarasma Pro modeling utility. Today, that utility provides a daily snapshot of the performance of your solar and battery installation. And over time, I'm extending this to provide a monthly and eventually an annual view. If you'd like to join me on this journey, you can do so by clicking on this link to my Patreon where you can get access. There is a small monthly fee for this, but it helps me cover the costs of the various software and APIs I have to buy, which form part of the utility. And at the same time, you'll be directly supporting my mission to educate as many people as I can around the world about the benefits of installing solar and related technologies in their home. 
Thanks for watching the video and I hope you found it useful. In my next video I'll be looking at various strategies you can employ to get the best out of the smart tariffs available in your part of the world. Not only to save as much money as possible but even make money. See you then.